What is happening y'all cowboy here and welcome back to another AC showcase and this is my go-to tetrapod build for PvP This is thunderstorm now, like I said, this is very much a build oriented towards PvP However, it can do a lot of damage against bosses in the right circumstance This is an AC that's very much designed that when you would get to the boss If you were to die you would reload pull this thing out and you'll probably demolish it This thing is designed to pump out a ton of stagger damage incredibly fast and then capitalize on that with the stun needle launcher while this weapon only has a thousand attack power, it has a huge direct hit adjustment at 225, allowing you to do a massive amount of damage if timed correctly to hit when the direct hit goes off. So to go through the full build here, for the right and left arm unit, we are working with the Ducket. The Ducket is just the long barrel handgun. If you don't have this one available yet for some reason, you can certainly use the lesser handgun, but keep in mind, this does have less impact as well as less accumulative impact. All in all, you're gonna be much better off with the standard Ducket. Moving on from there, of course, the Stun Needle Launcher. Now, these are provided to you via the story. You get them around the end of chapter three. And while they initially seem that they are a utility type weapon, they are incredibly potent because not only are they gonna do damage, they're gonna do that shock. And when you take that into account with the direct hit adjustment, we are able to do a massive amount of damage incredibly fast. Uh, there's been a little joke in the Armored Core Discord where we call something the Cowboy Blast. And this, this is what I refer to as the Cowboy Blast. This thing is absolutely devastating. To be completely honest, there's a good chance it'll probably get nerfed. It's that strong. Uh, moving on, as for the head, right now we have the ephemera head, but the head isn't particularly important here. This is just a very well-balanced head. Uh, the scan effect duration is kind of low, but aside from that, it's pretty well-rounded in terms of defense, AP, uh, good attitude stability on it. Moving down from there, the VE-40A. In terms of AP, you don't get many chests that are beefier than this. This is an incredibly strong chest. I use this on a lot of builds. Uh, I would say this along with the uh, the DFBD here, those are probably my go-to chests for most of the time, just because I'm not as worried about the booster stuff on a lot of builds as I am about defense. As for the arms, we're also running the ephemera here, but the biggest thing here is we just really want to have our melee specialization, or excuse me, our firearm specialization at least at 100, because it's really important that we hit these pistol shots. So if you don't have access to those, I know those are a, a little bit later, we could go over to firearm specialization, you could use the, the knock, you could use the Alba, the VP. Uh, obviously, you're going to have less AP, but any of these are going to do just fine. The biggest thing is you don't want to be using something, you know, like, like here with the Wrecker, where you have 23 or 53. You need to make sure you have some firearm specialization. For the legs, I actually prefer the lighter tetrapod for this. You could go with the heavier one, but it's not really going to be necessary. And keep in mind, running this, you're going to have slower boost speed, slower quick boost speed. Uh, you're going to have less, well, we're not really worried about defense that much. But in general, I just find the lighter one to be, be a better bet here. If you're struggling for some reason, you can put on the bigger one. But I think the lighter one does just fine. As for the booster, right now we have the Flugelon. This is a decent all-rounder choice. It has some good upward thrust, a uh, little bit of, of quick boost thrust, and this isn't an AC like Sandstorm, which we will showcase soon, where we're really worried about our AB thrust to get up high. Uh, we really just want to kind of hover and float and stay right on top of enemies, and that's what this build does, and this is a decent generator for that. Uh, as for the focus, right now I have the Ocelus, which is pretty late game. Until you get that, I would recommend the Abbott. The biggest thing here is we want good close range assist. So the Abbott, you can get that incredibly early. I'd suggest using that until you unlock the Ocelus, which is hidden in the chest. As for the generator, there's a couple different choices here, but I like the Hukushi. This has a relatively high regen on it, up at 952, and especially with the Tetrapod, I want to spend, uh, you know, I'm going to be, there's a lot of time in the air. So if I land, I want that regen kicking in, and I want it filling up very fast so that I can get back into the action, and this helps to accomplish that. As for the expansion slot here, Assault Armor is a no-brainer. This is a very stagger-oriented build, and if we were to stagger something and our cannons aren't off cooldown, we can follow up with Assault Armor to do some big damage. Alternatively, if we break a target stagger uh, with the Assault Armor, we can then follow up with our cannons. So it's twofold there. It works out well in both circumstances. Now, as I mentioned, you certainly can play through missions with this. It's not really ideal for it, mainly because you don't have a lot of ammo in the handguns, and this is really designed just to kind of, you know, 
focus a target and take it on out. Uh, so instead, we're going to actually jump in and do some arenas with it because that will give you a really good idea of what this build is designed to do. And then after a few arenas, I'm actually going to try and take it into PvP in real time and show you what it's capable of. Like I said, this thing is probably getting nerfed. It's just disgusting how hard it hits during the direct hit mode. Keep in mind you can reload your handguns if you need. And in general, you don't want to fire below 150 meters with this. Ideally, you're basically right on top of the target when you're firing with this. And that's why I really like the Tetrapod, just because we're kind of sitting right on top of them. And there it is. That's the Cowboy Blast. Instantly, as you saw right there, we end up doing a most of its health, honestly. The health just kind of got erased when that went off. Uh, and what's happening here is on top of these two stun guns having... Decent attack already. You know, a thousand damage is nothing to scoff at, especially because keep in mind the firing shot on this. This is borderline a railgun, so it can hit targets that are far away. It flies relatively straight. Uh, it goes out very fast, but we have that direct hit modifier. So what we're really doing here is we're capitalizing on the stagger potential that the pistols are going to provide. And then after those, we are following up with that massive hit. And that hit, obviously, is going to do a ton of damage, direct hit, as well as the lightning that's procking off of it. So it's it's a very consistent build for doing large amounts of burst damage, and this is what makes it so dangerous in PvP, and in some cases, even dangerous against bosses. You know, if we're just in a, uh, a situation where we're fighting a boss in particular... Let's see, all right, look at that. Brute almost, almost just died from that alone. Almost died from just the blast going off. Absolutely devastating. And like I said, this is probably going to get nerfed. Uh, you, you could also do this with just like double grenade cannons, and it's going to be very similar. So in the event that this does get nerfed, obviously I'm going to lose the multitude of Thunderbolt emblems that are all over me. Uh, but I could certainly run this with other things. You could run it with grenade cannons. You could run it with some, uh, some of the, the faster missiles in the game. Let's do one more. Let's go, uh, let's do Chatty. Chatty is, is very fast, even though he's not a, uh, a lightweight. The lightweight tank is, is incredibly zippy. It's very annoying to keep up with. One of the things I like here is this is typically a weapon that you're going to get a, a little bit of, uh, kind of pause with when you fire it. But by being up in that, that hover stance that the Tetrapod offers, we're able to just instantly fire out both of those. Just instant fire on both of those cannons. And, you know, there's there's no... It's just they drop in, they ready, boom. Huge, huge, huge damage capability on this thing. I honestly feel a little bad using it in PvP. Uh, just because it's... I don't know. It feels borderline like cheating, but, I mean, this is, these aren't late-game parts. You know? This is just... This is stuff that's that's pretty easily accessible. So let's hop on in. We will uh, go into Nest. We'll do custom match real fast. Let's, let's see if we can find a one-on-one -on -one to show it off in. I'm gonna do probably, probably two one-on-one -on -one matches with it and then we'll jump in and we'll do a three-on-three. -on -three. In terms of counters to something like this, the biggest thing is going to be players that just keep away. Uh, obviously, we want to get close to a target to land those pistol shots. So if somebody is playing keep away and they're constantly running, your best bet's going to be assault boosting after them and trying to get that stagger with the pistol or waiting for them to come close and potentially catch them with assault armor. But regardless, the damage here is just unreal. It's an it's insane amount of burst when the opportunity prevents, presents itself. And here we go. We're up against the tank. This will be a decent test. Tanks tend to be incredibly beefy. A Gatling tank, no less. I can't tell if that's a jamming launcher or a napalm launcher. If it's napalm, he's in bad luck. If it's jamming, I am kind of screwed.
When I'm using the uh, the pistols, I like to alternate my shots, kind of how you're seeing me do right here, where it's like one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And the main reason for that is this way, if I'm firing double at the same time, if one misses, they both miss. Whereas, I don't know, I feel like if I'm alternating, it's not quite as bad. See, even the tankiest of targets are going to go down to this. And usually, usually when I'm playing something like this, I am targeting specifically bipeds, reverse joints, anything that's going to be lighter. I'm going to make it my job to utterly destroy them with it. Time rage quit. Oh my god. Well, <laughs> it doesn't get much better than that. Dude, straight up said, F that. I am not fighting this and bail. Okay, let's uh let's let's try and find a team game instead. That's if we get a good team match, that'll be uh people will be less likely to immediately bail. I can't believe that. I couldn't ask for a, a better setup, to be honest. That was, uh, that was beautiful. Are any of these almost full? This one's locked. Let me see if I can get in it. I'm a five of six. If I can get in, that's perfect. Join, starts, beautiful. Yeah, so, um, like I said, it's, it's pretty toxic. Because we're not, you know, we're not doing anything too crazy. Is that a, that's a nipple. Wow. Or is it? I don't know. It's like a nipple, but with like a cut through it. That's weird. It's definitely a nipple. You're a weirdo, Rook, wherever you're at. Rook Willard. I like the nerve emblem. That's pretty cool. One of the nice things here is because this is designed to take advantage of stagger uh and, and 3v3s we are we are constantly constantly going to be seeing targets that get hit with stagger and then we're just immediately taking them on out so it works quite well there i know a lot of people keep asking how do you think the the, the pvp meta is going to go and stuff like that honestly i think it's completely too early to tell but I will say I think this is going to be a popular strat. Capitalizing on the, the double the double stun launchers on a, a stagger is just a devastating amount of damage. But like I said, you could also do this with stuff like grenade launchers. You could do it with the uh, charged pulse cannon. So there's a lot of different weapons you can run this strat with if these particular weapons get nerfed. But it is quite satisfying. Shotgun Tetra and two bipeds. Let's see, what do we got? A reverse joint, my decaled ass, and a biped. Oh no, that's, a, that's the fast biped. That's the knock. Well, let's hope they know what they're doing. Where the hell are they at? A little late on the shot there. It still looks like we got a partial now. Come on down, shotgun man. Huge damage on him right there.
chance to kill him before I could. Try and get a shot there before we went down. You get somebody that's dumb enough to just get right in front of you. Don't be afraid to use them even if you don't have a stagger. I'm not dead yet, dude. <laughs> oh, man. I have tried this with some other variants, stuff like uh, reverse joints. You can do it, but the tetrapod float instant drop on the uh, ability, I find that works very, very well. And a whopping 1,082 points. Scored more points than their entire team. Yeah. Now given, game just came out. A lot of players are learning. <laughs> Most of them all left too. Uh, this is obviously kind of busted. But keep in mind, these are all pretty early parts. You can have all of these, I think, by like the start of chapter four. Uh, so nothing too late game, and like I said, I think there's a, a good chance this is probably going to get nerfed. Uh, but it's an incredibly potent build, and honestly, it's one of those things where I felt like I'd rather share this than just keep it to myself and be like, no, no, no one can have this, only me. So, uh, either way, that is Thunderstorm. I'm gonna upload that to the PC network. There is the share ID. Either way, thanks for coming on by. In the next video, we are going to have a reverse joint. And then after that, we're going to have a tank. I'm going to be putting a lot of these builds up just to give you all some more ideas when it comes to making ACs. So thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.